A warm welcome to you all on this sixth Sunday after Trinity. My name is Anthony Pogo. I'm the Archbishop of Canterbury's advisor on Anglican Communion Affairs. In one week's time, we will be hosting the Lambeth Conference and welcoming Anglican bishops from around the globe. The Lambeth Conference has met every decade since 1867. Bishops gather to talk about the needs of the church and the world. It is an important time for bishops to meet with their peers from all around the globe and have a time for prayer, dialogue, and spiritual reflection. Outcomes of the conference will have influence on the mission and ministry of the Anglican Communion for the decade ahead. Jesus Christ is King of it. He lives his life in us for the sake of the world. Jesus is alive today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The world belongs to God. The world and all its people. How good and how lovely it is to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If the lost disciples keep silent, these storms will shout aloud. Lord, open our lips. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. We are delivering our service today at Lambeth Palace, which used to host the Lambeth Conference years ago. Nowadays, the conference happens in Canterbury at the University of Kent, 
as there are so many bishops. Out of Lambeth Palace, many bishops have been ordained and worked to serve the Anglican Communion around the world. We look forward to welcoming bishops and their spouses who will be arriving for the conference this week. Many of our guests are in communion links with many dioceses around the United Kingdom and we are delighted that so many will be making the journey to the UK this summer. So our service today will focus on the themes of hospitality, welcome and community as we give thanks together for what it means to be a diverse and multicultural church. The grace of God has dawned the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to welcome the Most Reverend Dr. Josiah Ido Ferron, the Secretary General of the Anglican Communion, to offer his reflections on hospitality. Hospitality is all about welcoming, honoring, 
and respecting others. We go beyond our own needs and desires. We seek to serve, to put needs of other people above our own, to create a space of belonging and community. This week, we will welcome our Anglican sisters and brothers, many of whom will have made long and difficult journeys to be with us in Canterbury for the Lambeth Conference. It will be an important moment to stand together as Christians from around the world to learn from one another, to celebrate our diversity, to appreciate one another's context. May we consider afresh what it means to share in the boundless love that Christ Jesus demonstrates for his church. We're now going to have a reading from Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 to 15. The reading will be shared by Sharon Harper, the worldwide president and chair of the Mother's Union, and Bishop Emma Einstein, who is chair chaplain to the Mother's Union, part of the Lambeth Conference Design Group and Bishop to the Archbishop of Canterbury and York. Many of the bishop's wives or husbands attending the conference work with the Mother's Union around the world. The Mother's Union plays a vital role around the world, sharing God's love and supporting the role of the family and community life. The words of Genesis and Abraham's welcoming the three visitors inspire us with importance of hospitality. My name is Sharon Harper, Worldwide President for Mother's Union, and you can imagine we work very closely with the Anglican Communion. In fact, we are very much a huge part of the Anglican Communion. And today I will be reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them, and he bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. 
While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? they asked him. There, in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our next reflection, Mrs. Caroline Welby will do a reading from the book of First Peter and offer a short comment on what she's looking forward to about the Lambeth Conference. My name is Caroline Welby, and with my husband, the Archbishop of Canterbury, we are looking forward to welcoming bishops and their spouses from all over the world for the Lambeth Conference. I can remember when Justin first became Archbishop we visited every archbishop and spouse in their own context. And the, the visits uh, had a familiar pattern. Every time we would arrive in an unfamiliar place, everything was strange to be greeted by the archbishop. We would be taken for a meal and we would try to talk to each other and think of what we might want to say. But it was tiring and with relief we would all go to bed. The following morning, everything was different. The place was more familiar, and suddenly these people had become friends overnight. Now, the Lambeth Conference is not like an intimate gathering because there will be so many people, but it is our prayer and our hope that by creating a safe and welcoming space, that when the dust settles and when surroundings become familiar, then the real work of getting to know one another by shared experience, listening, learning, laughing, eating together can begin. 
I'm going to read now from uh, Peter's first letter, chapter 4, beginning at verse 7. The end of all things is near. Therefore be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you.
We will now hear a sermon from the Archbishop of Canterbury inspired by the book of First Peter, the biblical focus of the Lambeth Conference. Come Holy Spirit and set our hearts on fire with the flame of your love. Amen. Peter's first epistle is written to people who are struggling. There's a lot of people who will be watching this and think, oh, that sounds a bit like me, like us, like our family. They were struggling for all kinds of reasons. They were a small minority in a very hostile political environment. They were poor. They were puzzled by some of the things happening in the world around them. Ring a bell? And they were just unsure of what it meant to live day to day as a Christian. Was God really choosing them? Are they really special? If God loves them, why is life so difficult? Oh, and by the way, they were saying, why are the other Christians so difficult? And the whole of 1 Peter looks at this. It talks about different groups within the church. But the passage that was read this morning covers especially how they relate to one another. And I love it because it has these verses about love and hospitality. The thing that the Roman world couldn't get its mind round with the Christians was that they didn't behave like other people. They weren't hostile to outsiders. In fact, they seemed to care for them when they were ill without hope of reward. That went on for centuries, still does. They seemed to care for each other. They seemed not to hold the same notions of honor and shame, but to be built up, whether they were slaves or free or rich or poor, to be built up because of this person, Jesus Christ, who they claim was risen from the dead. And Peter in this bit is pointing to the very heart of what made the church work. It was a church of love for those in the church. Maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. We all know what that means. It means when there's someone you really love, they can get things wrong and you just say, oh, well. It's not that they're right, but it's my husband, it's my wife, it's my dad, it's one of the kids. Many of us will have had that conversation when we say, look, yeah, we know what you've done, but you'll, we'll always love you because you're part of the family. We always love you. The Christian church is meant to be like that family, always loving. Secondly, it was a place of hospitality. Now, we find that in the Church of England. So many of you will be in churches that have um, uh, home groups, that have uh, food banks, that have multi-banks, that have schools and people come into the church. And just in so many ways, we practice hospitality. In the next couple of weeks, we've got bishops from all over the world coming to the Lambeth Conference. Hasn't happened since 2008 with their spouses to enjoy the hospitality of the Church of England all from the Anglican Communion, to come with their suffering and their troubles and their difficulties and their joys and their example and their resilience and their courage and to come here 
so that we pray together and meet together at Canterbury, we think about the challenges of the future. It's a gift of hospitality to the Anglican Communion. And that is something hugely significant. And they will love it. And we will benefit from them. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. That's one of the challenges. And the follow-on from that is, basically, if you've been given things, give freely. God gives to us, we should give freely. And Peter goes on to say, whatever your particular gifts are, use them. So please, in the next two or three weeks, pray for the Lambeth Conference. Give your time in prayer that we may grow as God's people this extraordinary worldwide gathering. And one of the things that's going to be most distinctive comes in the last three verses of the reading. That we are being hospitable to people who are refugees, who are caught in persecution, caught in civil war. We suffer. But so many come for whom suffering at its extreme is their daily experience. Let us welcome them and bring them hope and healing. Let us be the church where people go away saying, we had such hospitality, such a welcome, that we knew that that Church of England is a church where God is found. And the gifts of God and the goodness of God and the love of God is shared. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My name is Yeshwa Zuhail. I come from Pakistan. I'm a member of the community of St. Ansem, living at Lambeth Palace, 
for a year of prayer, study and service. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we commit the upcoming Lambeth Conference into your hands, praying for all bishops and their spouses, and the churches and communities they represent around the world. We ask for your Holy Spirit to inspire your people as they walk, listen and witness together on how to be your church in your world. We pray for Archbishop Justin for strength, resilience and wisdom as he prepared to lead the Lambeth Conference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I am Maya Williams from Trinidad and Tobago. Heavenly Father, we place into your loving hands all the countries that are experiencing conflict and crisis. We pray especially for the most vulnerable persons in these societies. They suffer the most. We pray also for the earth, which at times experiences irreparable damage due to human activities in times of war. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. You are the defender of the oppressed, and you are the creator of the earth. Have mercy upon them. May your spirit change the hearts of those who can bring about positive change to the earth and mankind. Lord, in your mercy. I'm Jamila Otuko. I come from Kenya. God, we pray for the sick. We pray that you may stretch your healing hand upon them. We pray for those who are waiting in line for treatment and those who cannot afford to pay for the treatment that they need, that you may provide for them. We pray for families of those who are sick, that you may give them peace. We also pray for the doctors and nurses, that you may renew their strength and give them wisdom as they continue to treat patients. Lord, in your mercy. I am Enoch Lubari. Uh, I come from South Sudan. Lord Jesus, we thank you for establishing your church on earth. We pray and ask you to inspire the church leaders to work for peace and unity, to have one goal, purpose, vision, and calling that makes for oneness and unity of the church. Pray that the church is coming to maturity and unto fullness of measure of Christ. May your truth and light in the world break upon the church again with one world vision, the evangelization of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 
Amen. We're now going to conclude our service with a prayer from the Church of the Province of Kenya, and we will be demonstrating this prayer. All our problems all our difficulties all the devil's works All our hopes we send to the risen Christ. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.